Hi friends, welcome back to our Prairie TV. Vice President Osibanjo begging Abakeyari to avoid impeachment. This is revealed by Jackson. And this is not Michael Jackson, of course you know he's late. Popular journalist and publisher Point Blank News Jackson Ude has revealed that Vice President Yemi Osibanjo reportedly went to beg President Muhammadu Buhari, Chief of Staff, and rumored cabal leader Abakiari to avoid being impeached. Now, I brought you the story, and a lot of people say it's not possible for Abakiari or for the president right now to find a way of impeaching the vice president. Anyway, whatever your take is, let us meet at the comment section. Jackson also alleged that popular preacher Tunde Bakare is the rumored replacement for Vice President Osibanjo. He wrote on his Twitter timeline on Saturday. He said, Embattled Vice President Osibanjo went begging President Abba Kiari last night. Now, that president is in court while that is going on. Pastor Tony Bakar is on his way to New York to join heads of Wari Kabal. The plot to remove the vice president is not only about how he sacked Daura, but the stealing in his office. Now, I'm just going to quickly show you what this is all about. They also explained via his Twitter handle that President Buhari did not hand over to Osiman Job before leaving the country. So these are people that have some internal affiliation with President Goodluck Jonathan. As I brought you the story of Renault Mokri, what he said. Now we don't know how true these things might be. But then, as Nigerians, you know, th there is everything is possible in Nigeria. So whenever these things come up, we have to actually bring it out let me quickly go to the official twitter handle of jackson and here he writes embattled vice president osimanjo went begging president abba Keyari last night while that is going on pastor tunde bakare is on his way to new york to join heads of the buari cabal the plot to remove the vice president is not only about how he sacked daura but he's still in, in his office and of course a lot of comments now he went further to say most of the telephone numbers of traders who benefited from trader money does not tally none of the traders have paid back why the officially approved amount is 10,000 naira traders got between 5,000 and 6,000 naira the shortfalls ended up in Osibanjo and his cronies pockets now if you are a benefactor beneficiary of this traders money let us meet at the comment section below and if you are a member of pastor tunde bakare's church they said right here revolutionary jackson ude is saying that your pastor is on his way to new york city to meet with buaris cabal if this is true let us meet at the comment section below jackson ude is a communications professional and a former director of strategy and communication under president good luck jonathan so people replied serious accusations here we have always been taught to dine with devil with a log spoon or simply don't dine at all but oga vp wanted to to be politically correct the determination to emasculate the star boy and bullion godfather has begun we they look Ekiti Sage is not bothered in the interim as long as they do not interrupt my pound and yam and are ready to pack their properties in 2023. I say no tension. And here, someone right Dear Mr. Jackson Ude, I don't wish to call you a liar, but could you please tell us when this happened? Exactly because the vice president has been in Uyo since yesterday afternoon. He visited Isima Ekere in Uyo last night and is part of the Thanksgiving service in Uyo this morning. So, guys, I don't know how this had up anyway. And here's someone writes, you people should stop giving snippets and wetting appetite. We like this kind of thing to take us on our way, Joe. You are spoiling the film. We know you have watched it before. Allow us to enjoy when papers will carry ICPC begins investigation on petition submitted against Vice President. I have it on good authority that EFCC is already investigating one of the agencies under Osibanjo. I brought you that story. Yes, they are. You see, the way an against case happened, that's how I want this one. No warning, just one funny NGO with a petition to ICPC and then, boom, ICPC forward result of investigation to NS, 
uh, National Assembly praying for the impeachment of Vice President so he can be investigated and before we know it, he will be impeached. This is definitely about undermining BAT. Well, Tinubu is really a BAT if he is blind enough not to have read the handwriting on the wall by now. Of course, as you know, there was a time that the wife of Tinubu cried and said they used my husband and now they are trying to sideline my husband. And I don't know, maybe things changed a little bit. Have you read it already? When I said that man, that man was worse than Buari, people thought I was joking. That man is the devil himself, a rat that will bite you and fan you so you won't know he's been very instrumental in the hardship Nigerians face. Next, it is T Numbu. Yeah, someone says some people will believe this. So it means some people do not even believe it. Some say news from fake news.com Dubai strategy failed on arrival. Tunde Bakari will be disgraced out too from the office before 2023 to perfect their bid for final takeover. So what guys, what, what's your take about this? Let us meet at the comment section. Do you think these stories are true? Do you think these guys have a way since they've been in the corridors of power or they are just playing politics by creating some kind of frenzy when there is no problem at all? Or do you think these are political prof um, you know, forecasters? Do you think these are political prophets? They are able to see what is happening that other Nigerians might not be observant of. Maybe they are seeing what will happen next. Is it true that the vice president is just trying to act like everything is in order? Or Nigerians are just crying out to the opposition that the opposition PDP is also writing all of this because they felt that Buhari cannot probe the vice president if certain agencies under him have some issues. It might necessarily not be him being the head of the agency. It could be that he reported to Buhari and said certain groups of people are involved in certain things, but I need a probe in this. Who knows? But whatever it is, I know that there is this tension for 2023. The Aousas believe that the power should come back to them. In fact, El Rufai wants to become president. And if he cannot become president, he's looking for someone from the northern part of Nigeria to, you know, I think they are kind of worried and afraid. If an Igbo person will become president, maybe it will divide Nigeria, but I doubt this because the Igbos will now keep quiet when someone from their own region is now president. And they would expect that a lot of things, appointments, and every other thing comes to them. Maybe, but then who knows? Anything can happen. But it will be very interesting to see 2023. I know some might say there's no new thing under the sun. That there's nothing that we've not seen in Nigeria that once money pass from one hand to the other, you find some Igbo people speaking from two sides of their mouth, you see more agitations, and maybe Boko Haram will increase their killings, and Niger Delta warriors will also begin to you know kidnap. We, we just don't really know what is going to happen 2023 yet. Of course, you know our pastors, our prophets, they are very good at prophesying, although they try to be very calm this period of time. The prophecies they gave were not that kind of too, unlike before, they prophesy, they say God told them, and sometimes you begin to wonder who God is speaking with, who, who God is speaking to. This one will say this, this one will say the other thing here. You know, it's like a mixed house, anyway. So, right now, we will see what this is all about. 2023, Igbo. Yoruba, Aousa, which of them will become president? Do you think that the Yoruba will become the next president 2023? And, I, and for me, I don't really care who becomes president because I realize that every one of them are corrupt. Either the Igbo man, the man from the middle belt, Aousa man from the north, Aousa Fulani, the Yoruba man, they are all corrupt. It is only their family members that benefit from this not any other person but we have been fooled to believe that when your tribe represents you at the executive arm of the government you feel that you are satisfied but you are just a fool you've been fooled someone from your region representing you means nothing if you or the generality of nigeria cannot benefit now i'm talking about people that have not had proper in fact, all of Nigeria do not have electricity constantly. 
Now, we are talking about roads in certain parts of the nation that they awarded a contract to the governor of the state, from the federal to the state. And you know what your state governor did? He looted, he spent the money. So what are we talking about? Is it about tribe? We need someone that will be upright, not someone that they will sell like Buhari to the Nigerians. Someone that will not see tribe, but will look at the decay in the system. Someone with an, with, with an upright value system. That is what we are talking about, not just tribe. So don't let us sell tribe here. And if any of this is not going to work, I think if they are not going to restructure, the best thing for Nigeria is to break so we can all handle our issues in that our little enclaves, the smaller nations. Here, someone posted this, no be everything you see, you go talk. And this is a dog covering the mouth of another one. So let us meet at the comment section below. While you're that, may I remind you to kindly tap on that subscription button and also the red notification icon bell below. It's very important so that you'll be notified whenever new videos are uploaded. Thanks for stopping by.